All right, everybody. So today is a Q and A. I asked you guys on Instagram. I'm not sure if you guys follow me, but you would have seen me ask what topic you guys wanted to talk about. And the topic of marriage and family was like number one. Number two was about the whole influencer world and what I do. So what we're gonna talk about today is marriage and family since that was number one and the next video will be about influencing. So I wanna try to make this like a weekly thing, almost like a podcast where you can just, you know, either watch it or listen to it and we can just talk about certain things and kind of be candid and just make it something fun and interesting and also just be able to take different, you know, perceptions on things, viewpoints, different stances. And so let's just get into it. And again, I just wanted to make this super casual. I have my coffee here. I have my water there too. Okay, probably one of the questions that I was asked most is about baby number two. And the first question was actually, are you constantly asked when you are having another baby? <laughs> Currently dealing with this. So, you know, I know that a lot of people get excited and are just curious and want to know if people plan to have kids or more kids. And I think a lot of times it's not like a negative or malicious question. I think that sometimes you kind of have to gauge, right? And kind of use your street smarts and your common sense, you know, some couples are maybe going through stuff and maybe that's why it's a sensitive subject and I think that's why a lot of people don't like being asked that. It is a personal thing too. But for us, we do plan on having more kids. I think that after having Presley, I realized that I kind of want to be on our own plan and like take our own time, I guess. I think it's really easy to be influenced by what we see online. I think that after I had Presley, there were so many people that I followed that had babies back to back and like also had babies around the same time. So in that sense, like I was kind of, I felt like I almost had to do that, but I also was super overwhelmed with having a baby and still working and not having family around. And I had to think and take myself or like take a step back and, you know, ask myself, do those people have family around that help? A lot of the, those answers were like, yeah, they do. And that's, I think, why it's easy for them to just have kids so easily back to back or multiples. I personally don't have my family here. Jamie's family is here in California. And we'll get to that because I think another question that I saw on here, actually, <laughs> The crazy how the next question is, how often do you see your husband's family? So with that same sentiment, Jamie's family is here, but we don't see them often. So his mom is up north in Northern California. His sister is here. She has her own family. His dad lives like 15 minutes away, but I don't know. I think it's a little bit different with dads and grandpas because you don't really expect them to do. I mean, I wish you, I wish we would, you know what I'm saying? I think it's also different with that, like I mentioned, and then also just being out of the game for like so long and not really knowing how to be around babies after not having them for so long. So I think that's what makes it hard for us, especially for me. I really realize how important family is, especially having kids. Like my family would be around to help all the time but they're just not, you know, and it, and they have their own lives. Like my dad has such an established foundation that supports my whole family. And so for him to just pick up and leave, it's kind of not very ideal. So a lot of people ask me if I can, you know, I would love to move them here, but it, there's just so many different factors that play into that. It's just not, it doesn't really make sense. Now, if it was the other way around, it probably would make sense for like Jamie's mom to move down here and her husband to move down here. But at the same time, you know, they're very different from my family. Like, I guess I know what my parents can do. And then when it comes to his family, you know, it's, it's different, right? Like I can't expect the same things. I feel like a lot of times the mom wants her own family to help. And it's kind of a little weird, I guess, for the guy's parents. But I know so many instances where the guy's parents are so involved. I think it's just a matter of if they're just giving you that 
offering, right? Like if that offering's there and they show that um, they want to help and be involved and that you can ask them for that, then, then that's great. And I think that a lot of families have that situation. Personally, like we don't. So I think sometimes it's kind of clear. So that's also why, sorry, it's super long winded, but that's why we haven't just like sped into having a second kid, but I for sure want Presley to have a sibling. Next question. I got a lot of these ones as well. Basically asking if our marriage has changed after having kids. And yeah, I think that a lot of things change after having kids. Time, just like the time that you spend together changes. Your energy is different, so maybe a lot of the things that you guys do used to do, you know what I mean? It's like either non-existent or you're just like trying. And then also just like being able to do stuff together, like go out without having to find a nanny and pay them and all those factors. So that's very different. We have to schedule things out and yeah. All right, next question. How did I meet Jamie? So Jamie's my husband's name if you guys are new and we've been married. We got married in 2019 We've been together since 2014 I believe I don't know sometimes I just like forget and I don't remember anything So basically I had just broken up with my ex-boyfriend. I was Pretty much wanting to be single. I had two long-term relationships when I moved to California, that after those two long-term relationships, I told myself, okay, I'm not gonna get into a relationship unless it's someone I'm gonna marry. The next person I date is gonna be the one that I marry because I learned so much from those old relationships that I basically was like, okay, now I know what I want. Having had those relationships, I know exactly what I want in the next one and hopefully that's the one I'm gonna marry. And it just happened that way. So like I said, I wanted to be single, I had just broken up with my ex-boyfriend and I was actually like good with the breakup. Like it took me a bit, but I feel like I bounced back really fast and I was just like ready to get out there and have fun. So I was still living in Orange County at the time. We would always come to LA to go party. So that's what I did. Came out to do, go to like a day club back in the day called 14 or XIV Summer Sessions, if you guys remember. It's like a day club where they do champagne showers and it gets crazy. So I met him there. I was actually with a bunch of guys. We were at a table and he was there and he saw me with those guys. And I don't know, I think we just kind of like kept looking at each other. I would notice that he would look at me and then I would also just like ignore and just continue doing my thing. And then there was one time during that outing where I actually was like right next to him at the bar because one of the guys asked me if I wanted to go get a shot at the bar. So I said, yeah, went to the bar. Jamie was like right here, right here next to me as I was taking a shot with another guy. But still, nothing happened. I think he said that he didn't really know if he could, could like swoop in, if maybe I was dating one of those guys. So kept on doing my thing. And then came time that it was time to go home. So I was like heading out, about to leave. And I think he saw and noticed that I was leaving. So finally came in and started talking to me. And I honestly didn't even want to talk to anybody in that. You know, meeting someone in Hollywood out of the club, that was not, that was a place I told myself, like, I'm not gonna meet my husband here. People here are just looking to like be in the scene, be actors, actresses, whatever, like just show off. And I was not into it. Like I was like, people here are just probably like faking it till they make it. I'm not, no, not interested. But I did talk to him and having that mindset of like what I just said, I didn't really care what I said to him. So, you know, he wanted to talk to me and he was like chatting it up, told him where I was from, from an island. He was talking about how his cousins are from an island. I'm like, whatever. And then we started talking about like where we lived. And then I said, I live in OC. He's like, I live in LA. Then he told me what his job was. And I was like, whatever. So then I was like, you know what? He wants to talk all this, like, let's talk. Let's, let me ask him the hard questions. And if he gets turned off, like, I don't care anyway. So I said, oh, you live in uh, LA. Do you own or do you rent your house or place? And he said, oh, I own. And I was like, okay. And then I said, do you live alone or do you have roommates? And he was like, I live alone. And I was like, 
Okay, that's really good. I don't know if you're lying, but that's really good. And I just kind of expected someone that I met at the club to say that they lived with roommates still and that they were still renting. But like none of that mattered. I just didn't really care. But it was like kind of checking all the boxes and I was like, okay. I gave him my number, but I did not expect to hear from him at all. So the next day comes, I get a phone call, an actual phone call, not a text, a phone call. It was Jamie and he actually wanted to talk on the phone and get to know me. And honestly, that was one of the things that I think really stood out to me was someone that is still willing to pick up the phone, have a conversation the old school way, get to know me and not like have the small talk of just texting, hi, how are you? I will never forget that. I think that's what's lacking in today's world, in the world of dating, is just that old school connection of picking up the phone and talking and trying to have a deeper connection or just seeing if you have a deeper connection at all because you can do that over the phone without meeting somebody and then schedule the date. So that's how we met. All right, next question. I often hear you say, Jamie is away for the week or the weekend. How do you cope on your own? So since we met on and off, he's traveled for work. I think being in our house now, it was harder than what it was before before we were like in a condo and I think the setting of the house or the place we were living in always played a factor because we were in a condo that was like three units. It was like ours in the middle and then two around. And I guess for some reason I felt safer because I knew I had those two surrounding, like I guess families next to me and we knew them. So if anything happened, I could always go. But when we moved into our house, it was so much bigger. It was just like our house obviously they really know anybody and you know i just felt like i felt like i didn't have that safety net of someone or another house being stuck to ours i don't know why mentally that bothered me so when he would travel i would get scared i would feel like i would hear all the different cracks and sounds of the house not to mention i also had presley so then i was responsible for myself and another human being when he would be gone and that would kind of scare me now i'm so used to it it's not much of like a thought and it's traveling will be like a lot less. So if you'll travel like one day and be back or two at the most, but yeah, I don't know. I kind of now that I'm like older and grown, I appreciate that I get that alone time. But obviously like we have our routine, we have our things. When Presley goes down, we have our shows and we, you know, have our time. But I think it just gets easier if you're used to it. You know, it takes time though. But of course, and he knows, I would rather prefer him here because that then just leaves me when he's gone to just do everything. Okay, next question. What's your advice for girls dating in mid twenties? Oh my God. I love this question because I just remember all the fun I had in my twenties. And as much as I want to say like, do that, have fun. I know that there are some women some girls that don't picture their lives that way right and it's okay like some people may live in different parts of the country where getting married young is such a big thing and maybe some people just want that and that should be okay so i would say like have fun and use that time to really just like do your thing and get to know or learn who you are you're not gonna get to know or learn who you are for a long time. But as time goes on, you do. Um, and I think sometimes when you're with someone, you can kind of put all your effort and eggs and time into that relationship that, you know, maybe if so many years have gone by, you're almost kind of starting over. So that's kind of why I would say like, use your 20s for yourself and doing what you want. Learn who you are kind of, and then I think you'll know exactly what you also want in a partner. But another thing that I feel like is so important is to just listen to your gut. I think that we're like really given this gut for such a strong reason and your gut is usually always right. And like if you're with someone or if you like someone, excuse me, and you're like having such a hard time deciphering his text messages or you know, anything, and your gut is just feeling bad and like wrong. It feels there's a wrong gut feeling inside. It just feels like something is up. Then 
something's up. Like listen to your gut, whatever it feels like. If it's happy, then keep going. If your gut feel like is telling you like something's wrong, chances are 99% of the time something's wrong. So listen to your gut if you're dating and things should just be clear, right? One thing I know is that if someone wanted to be with you, he or she would. And it's as simple as that. There shouldn't be any games involved. So that and listen to your gut and honestly, pick up the phone and call. Whether you wanna tell the person you like to call you or you wanna just call them yourself. Because I think also sometimes people are now scared to call because no one really does that. But I think when you give in and like are the one to show them it's okay to call me, they'll probably call you more. I don't know. I'm just saying maybe that's a thought, something to try. Okay, how do you discuss finances in marriage? This person said I'm nervous about discussing bills, who pays what. So I think this is very personal and it's very dependent on what type of relationship you have. I feel like Jamie and I don't have like that typical financial like thing. So like I very much have and like to have and keep my own finances completely separate from his. And I don't really care what he's got going on as long as what we agreed on is paid and on time. But he pays for mostly, you know, the house stuff, the maintenance stuff. So like the gardener, the pool person, the utilities and things like that. And then I pay for mostly like Presley stuff. I don't know. As an influencer, you get a lot of stuff gifted, which is really nice, like for her. But when it comes to like clothes and things like that, like I'll just do it because I know he doesn't really know anyway when it comes to toys, when it comes to the things that she needs, like, you know, when she needed diapers and wipes and things like that, I would just get it. Just because I already knew all those things and it's just like, stick to the stuff that you know, the utilities, blah, 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 and I'll do mine. But I, we're not like traditional where we like share a bank account. We have like one account where we transfer money to each other and that's basically it. But for the most part, we just, I like, I like keeping it separate. I don't know. But you know, it's not, it doesn't all have to be the same. It's not one size fits all when it comes to that. It's just whatever works for you. And you know, I don't know. Okay, next question. How to not let the toxicity of social media ruin your relationships? So I'm not sure in what context that is. I think maybe I can just talk about different aspects of social media and relationships. So obviously like we all see the lovey-dovey posts from people we follow when it comes to birthdays and anniversaries and holidays and things like that. I used to care about those things and used to feel like the urge to always post for every like occasion, like a birthday. But then I was just like feeling that I was finding myself just like rewriting and reposting the same thing over and over again every year. And then I was like, why do I keep doing this? Like, who is this for? And what am I gonna say? Like, I'm just gonna say the same thing. And I love you. And just like the same old, almost like the card, right? We all say the same things when it comes to holidays and birthdays, we all say the same things, but like, it's not very heartfelt and like true to you and your relationship. It's almost just like, oh, you're supposed to say these things, so let's write it. And it's like boring to me. So then I just stop. I stop putting that pressure to like feel like I have to post for every occasion. So I just don't. You guys barely will see me post like for Jamie on his birthday. And it's not that I don't care. It's that we'll celebrate on our own in privacy at home. Cause I don't think either of us really care about if I get posted on Instagram for my birthday, you know, or vice versa. So I just took it off the table for Jamie. He's not in this world, so he doesn't really feel the need anyway. And I don't feel any way if he doesn't post or if he does, you know? Okay, next question. How was potty training Presley? So we're still literally potty training her. I did not think it was gonna be this hard, to be honest. I think that we started potty training her early last year. She was two. And I think that she, it was a little bit too early for her. I think we should have waited maybe another six months to try again. Now she's three and we po we're potty training her 
and she's very headstrong so i think maybe at two and a half i sh we should have tried again because she wouldn't have been you know maybe as headstrong as she is now so we're kind of in the thick of it she's great at peeing in the potty she's great at you know sitting and doing that but we're working on the other stuff like number two and I was just really stressed out. I was like putting so much pressure on myself and then I emailed her pediatrician and she just like took a lot of the load off of me by saying like take the pressure off and that she treats potty training as three different milestones. So the first milestone being peeing in the potty, that's its own milestone to deal with. The second is pooping in the potty, that's its own complete milestone and another phase of potty training to deal with. And then the third is like the overnight and like being able to hold it. So. I didn't look at it that way, but it made a lot more sense to me. And then when she told me to take the pressure off, I also felt a great weight lifted off my shoulder because I felt like she needed to get it all like right then and there. So we're still potty training and yeah, it was really hard. We did the three day at home thing where we didn't go anywhere and we would do like pants off. And third day was when she really like got it. Um, but those first few days, especially the first day, I was like, I don't think I can hack this to be honest like i was like this is really hard so yeah okay next question how do you and jamie handle conflict i married three years and admire you both that's so sweet well i hate to break it to you but i feel like we have you know our little bickering moments just as much as anyone else honestly i truly believe that i it's like the islander in me sometimes I can just be, I'm like the hothead, you know what I mean? So sometimes I'm like, yeah, and I just say things. I'm very blunt, I'm direct, and just, I'll like just tell you. And I feel like I used to be worse <laughs> at that back in the day, but now that I, you know, have grown, I definitely have learned to be less of that. But there's definitely still days, and if it is one of those things where it's just like I can't get myself out of my feeling, then I just need time sometimes, you know what I mean? Like I just need to step away and do like work, for example, and then I'll be able to come back and like almost like it never happened or we'll talk about it. But again, as cliche as it is, the commu communication part of it is super key, but like, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of rare that we really have like big like fights anymore. But, like obviously, as long as you guys can come back and talk things through is where it really matters, right? Because that's like long run stuff that no matter what, you always know that you can fall back on that. So I think some people also don't understand like our dynamic as a couple. I know I've gotten like little comments here and there when I would post vlogs but Jamie and I are so sarcastic because that's our way of just like having fun and laughing at each other sometimes we'll like tease each other I'm like <laughs> I love like teasing him and making fun of certain things and like he'll laugh about it and like you know that's just our banter we just banter and we like have fun with it and I think people would say that I'm like so mean to him and like he would have already left i think if it was that he was hurt from our banter but like we do it to each other all the time and we just like laugh you know all right someone asked do you think it's worth getting married if not going to have children yeah i don't think marriage means like you get married and you have to have children i know there's so many people that don't want children that are married and i think it's marriage is more so just like a union right? Like you want to commit to this person forever and it's a big commitment. So if you're like willing to commit and you want to take that step, great. Don't have to have kids at all. But of course, like assuming that you are clear about that with each other, like if you get married, I think if you don't want to have kids and you want to get married or, you know, you both should know and be okay with the fact that you both don't want kids. Cause if it's one person wants kids and the other person doesn't, that's where I feel like there could be huge issues and could cause resentment down the line if one person is just like wanting kids and saying okay I'll marry you because I love you even though you don't want kids like maybe you'll change your mind um, and then you get married and you're like a couple years in and then especially if you're a woman and then you look back and you're like I've lost so much so many years and obviously for us the timeline matters and for men it doesn't so 
as long as you guys have that conversation of like, I don't want kids to you and you come to an agreement, then by all means, but no, I don't think you need to get or have kids if you're going to get married. Next is next question. So this next question is one of those that I got a lot of basically asking me how I manage or balance marriage, toddler, work, workout, and keeping your home in order. I don't really love that word balance because balance is like, it's not perfect, right? So manage, I like that she used the word manage because every day when we get through the day, we basically managed it. Every day is not balanced, right? Like there are days where I wish I had more time to do X, Y, and Z. And I think we have such a good routine that we can kind of really count on, you know, things to like run the way we're used to it running but i would definitely want more time to work out every single day like i feel like in the last month i've only worked out like four times and i was used to always working out like every other day before i had presley so there's definitely not balance there and then yeah there's just like so many things that i want to do that i don't have time for having a toddler so having the routine for us is very important so we know what to expect in order to marriage all of those things working out is lacking for me personally a lot lately just because i currently have so much going on just like so many things that you guys don't know behind the scenes extra stuff right so i'm putting a lot of my energy into this the routine on and extra stuff on top of it that you know really needs my attention right now. And then Presley, Presley's on her routine. She's at school Monday through Friday. So that's, you know, we look forward to that. Keeping our home in order. So to, you know, we have a nanny. We're very lucky that one of the teachers at Presley school is her nanny. So when school's done, the teacher goes and gets Presley and brings Presley to her classroom and they play or do whatever until the teacher or our nanny is done with what she needs to do and then she drives Presley home before which most parents are used to doing is going and picking up their kids right smack dab in the middle of the day and that used to really like that used to be really hard because when you're filming like right now like it is 121 I would have to kind of plan okay shoot I need to like stop filming by this time it's also just really hard to pick back up where i left off when it comes to filming that energy that momentum is kind of gone but now that we have the situation with our nanny it's just so helpful to not have to like stop go and get her and then come back and then you know it's just so helpful to have that extra help and so she helps us keep things tidy jamie and i thankfully we're both such clean people. We always pick up after ourselves. We never have dishes in the sink overnight. And that's easy for us to say because we have one kit. It may be different with multiples. But yeah, that's like a huge thing. That was such a huge thing for me too. Like when I met him and I noticed how clean he was, I was like, okay, I love how clean he is. And that's rare. Um, but we just do, you know, and I teach Presley how to clean up. And I just take the extra time to clean up. Like that's the one thing, like if anything has to be in order, it's that. Cause I cannot focus when it's super extra messy. But yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Routine's very important. And then making a list of things that I need to do. And if I can start earlier on the thing, on my day. So I have extra time to do whatever, but no balance. It's not, I don't like that works. I don't think anyone has a perfect balance, especially with kids, but I'm tired a lot. Okay, one of the questions was, or is, how does Jamie feel about your cooking? Honestly, I think he likes most of it. I've been trying a lot of new recipes and I don't know what it is. I'm, I don't love cooking, but I am just so sick of ordering takeout all the time and not feeling like it's the best for us. So. I've just been trying to cook some really easy meals that I feel like I would like and hopefully it comes out and there are times when I'm like, do you like it? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, you're lying. <laughs> um, but at the same time, there are so many things that like I love that he doesn't like and it makes it hard for me to like take that into account. Like I love onions and he hates onions and I love most vegetables and he hates it. 
And I told him, I said, listen, either you cook or you just set it aside, the things that you don't like, because I can't, like, I cannot not enjoy cooking and also have to think about the things that you don't like. So I'm going to make the things that are on the recipe and stick with it. And you just have to manage. You either eat it, which is good for you, or you can cook your own meals. I always told him that, you know, if we ever made so much money or enough money, like the one thing, the first thing I would get is a private chef. Because I feel like that's where I would get a lot of my time back so that I would feel like I would have more of a balance. Because I just don't, I don't love it. I don't enjoy it. And the worst is like putting so much effort into cooking and then it's just gone after you eat it. You like don't get to see it anymore. At least with clothes, you can just, you can pay for it, you'll have it. And then you can, you can continue to use it and wear it and see it. And cooking is like so much time, effort, and energy, and then it's just gone. Okay, what is your take on a prenup? Um, I feel like that is so personal. I think it's so common these days. I think you also just need to make sure that you're marrying the right person regarding that, that if you do get it, then it's fine. But if you also don't get it, that it's fine too. I don't know. Jamie and I do not have a prenup. Next question, what has been the hardest thing about raising a daughter? That question was specifically about having a daughter. So a funny story was that when I was pregnant, I truly thought I was having a boy and I didn't think I was so attached to the idea until we found out that we were having a girl. After I found out I was having a girl, I was so distraught for like a week. I didn't realize how much it would have affect me, affected me. I was like, oh, I think I'm having a boy, but I also don't care. But I really did care and I didn't know it. So when I found out I was having a girl, I didn't talk to my tummy for a week. You know, like when you're pregnant, you talk to your tummy, you talk to your baby. And after I found out I was pregnant, I just didn't talk to her for a week. It was, it was like I was mad at her. I was like, not talking to you because you're not a boy. And then after that week went by, I don't know. I just, I just loved the idea of having a girl. That's just the crazy emotions and hormonal whatever of being pregnant. It was crazy. So if this person meant to ask what has been the hardest thing about raising a child just in general, I think it's just letting go of what my old life used to be. I honestly think that I'm still struggling with that and I don't know if you ever like get used to it you know and maybe you do and i hope i get there because obviously like i just loved being able to pick up and go and not ever having have to like look for someone to help out with that or pay someone just oh if i want to go to dinner let's go to dinner you know last minute whenever just like being able to pick up and go i don't you don't have that freedom you don't get that when you have a kid or kids right and then also just like I remember all the fun I used to have. I used to have so much fun and I think that's, you know, it was great. I wish I could just sometimes do those old things, but I have to remind myself that like I'm a mom now and like of course the fun doesn't end, but obviously it's like so much more thoughtful when I do want to have those types of trips or, you know, do things like that. It's a lot more planning, sometimes not as much, but you know, the freedom is just not there like it used to be. And I definitely struggle with that. Definitely traveling, I struggle with because I don't love traveling with a toddler or a baby. It does get difficult, especially with Presley, like she doesn't really sleep on planes and she's so interested in things and wants to, she has like FOMO basically. It makes it hard. So, you know, in that aspect, like, that's probably for me the hardest thing about having a kid is just that change not being able to just pick up and go whenever just like that freedom okay what is your astrology sign and what is jamie's i'm a gemini i'm born june 10th i think jamie is a virgo right he is born september 17th after that i don't know anything else because i'm not really into that but you guys can make your own whatever <laughs> what are your daily routines as a family so every day Pressy wakes up around 6 6 30 sometimes 7 so i usually have her for the morning part i make her breakfast get her up you know get her dressed and then 
make her food, make her lunch for school. And then I might take her to school depending on Jamie's work schedule or he'll take her. I prefer that he takes her because obviously for me as a woman, I it takes me so much more time to get ready. So he tries to take her to school as much as possible. That way after I, you know, she's out the door, I can just start getting ready for my day and work. So then him and I just work. Once she's at school, we work all the way until six o'clock. That's when the nanny stops. And then Jamie will take her and put her down for bed. But the nanny does and makes like her dinner and she'll eat during the nanny's time. And then yeah, he'll go take her, put her to bed. And during that time, I'm either like getting dinner ready or like it's ready and I'm just waiting for him to like finish putting her down and then we'll eat together and then we'll watch our shows and then it's bedtime. And then workout for me will be right around like between like around 3 p.m. if I get the chance to work out. So that's like every day. And then what are your family's annual traditions? Travels, vacation types. So there's only two travel traditions that we have every year. One is a Cabo trip because it's just so easy to go from LA. It's like two hour trip. And then our Hawaii trip where we go and meet my family in Hawaii because my parents and my brother still live on the island in Saipan and then we live in LA. So Hawaii is kind of the middle ground and that's where we meet. My dad and my brother also used to live in Hawaii. So those are the two like traditions and family vacations. What was your professional career prior to being an influencer? <clears throat> Excuse me. So prior to being an influencer, I was always in fashion, but in the retail space. I always knew that I wanted to do something in fashion. I grew up born and raised on the islands in Saipan and we didn't really have, you know, that much when it came to shopping and fashion and because we're just such a small island. But I was always into it because we had TV and we had magazines. So I'd always see all these, you know, fashionable people, all the celebrities. And I would just see and be so in love with their clothes and stuff. So I always, you know, even back home, I would try to even go to the tailor. I would sketch out what I want certain things to look like. And I'd go to the tailor and have it made. Like I remember one time we had this like event that me and my friends were going to when we had to have like a nice dress. It was like a ball. So I went and bought fabric and I sketched out what I wanted my dress to look like, took it to the tailors and she made it. So I always knew that when I moved to the States that I would try to get my foot in fashion. So I just, you know, my first job here was working at Hollister. And then I worked for this little boutique in OC. And in that little boutique, I really learned like the ins and outs of buying and I ran their website and I, I bought the clothing. I was basically like their buyer and the person who ran the website. And then I ended up going back home and opening my own store. It, you know, went on for about two years and then I decided to close it because I still wasn't ready to fully move back home. I still wanted to be here, but it's like I couldn't be in both places. So I had to decide which one I wanted more. So I decided to stay in California, close the store, continue to try to do something in fashion here. But yeah, I was just in retail. How did you come to choose your daughter's name? So I think it was on TV or somewhere where someone, obviously Elvis Presley is just a name everybody knows, but it was said somewhere on some outlet, I think it was TV where someone said Elvis Presley. And I just kind of said it back to myself, Presley, not Elvis Presley, but just Presley. And I kept saying Presley, Presley. Like obviously I'd, I've heard the name Elvis Presley so many times before, but just Presley alone sounded so cute to me. And I remember like putting it on my phone or just like it never left my mind. And I was like, that is such a cute name. Like I don't really hear people use the name Presley, we know it as a last name, but it's such like a proper sounding woman's name, I feel like, that she could grow into. Like it'd be cute for like a little baby and then like a beautiful name to grow into as an adult. That's the thing that I feel like I need to be careful of is making sure that I name my kids nice names, not just cute names, because names can be cute, but like growing into them and like 
making sure that it's still like a beautiful name when they're like adults also i thought was very important and for me presley was just a name that like i felt like was beautiful both ways young and old and jamie just loved the name too and we had a whole list of names but nothing ever really beat it so yeah i just it stuck to me when i heard it somewhere after hearing it so many times but now in a different light because you know i was pretty much at the age where i was thinking of like family and things like that how did you know jamie was the one so i kind of touched on this where i had basically taken my two long-term relationships as a grown-up here in california i took those two and i kind of like you know thought about it and basically compared the two and said okay this is what i know that i want having had those two relationships and basically compared like what i didn't want and what i wanted and then when i met jamie i just realized he had all those qualities of what i wanted you know having learned from the past so i just think it's important to learn from the experiences that you have and just really like lean into that so that you know what to avoid so you're not wasting your time making the same mistakes and so that when you do meet someone you can like easily point out like oh that's like the thing that i definitely know my ex had that i don't want and like this person has it and i cannot deal with that then you move on you know what i mean that's just how i found it but yeah i mean i think knowing that he <laughs> loved communicating early on by those phone calls that was like such a big thing for me because we would just talk all the time and we still do to this day like we still call each other all the time and talk about nothing at all <laughs> or about important things and we can just talk you know and we still do date nights or we, at least we try to still do date nights every friday he was very clean cleanliness is super important to me because that used to get on my nerves before like with my ex like it used to be pretty bad fights because i would like put in so much time to like making things nice and tidy and it would just be ruined like ruined and then also just making like him giving me the feeling or always giving me the feeling of feeling safe and secure that's very important and he had those qualities and so that's when i knew that he was a keeper oh and he is so much like my dad like you know how they say that you marry your dad like i love my dad and he is so much like my dad i'm it's crazy okay last question what could be a reason for you to stop being an influencer i think that's a great question i honestly think that the one reason that would make me just like pick up and go is if i decided to go move back home to be with my family in saipan honestly it's such a great place to be and live and grow up i was born and raised there and i had the best childhood i wasn't around all this craziness and i feel like i turned out to be like such a well rounded person because of it it's very wholesome back home everything is just about love and family and food and anybody new that comes in it's just about making them feel welcomed and hospitality and just kindness and i grew up around that so I can imagine like how great that must have been because now like i live in la and i was i only moved to la because jamie lived here i was living in oc but i mean people are just you know it's a faster life here obviously so people are just into themselves on their own and just like don't really care you're not really shown that much like respect i guess for one and then kindness is is lacking a lot people are tired road rage is there people are tired of the traffic so yeah i feel like that would be a really good reason and a reason that i would just be like i'm done i'm going home and i'm raising presley back on the islands because i know it's a great place it's just that i couldn't do what i do there what i do with influencing i couldn't do there because you know you i always need to get shipped stuff like clothing and things like that in order to work and sometimes it takes a long time for things to get all the way in the middle of the ocean but yeah that could very well be a possibility but i do love what i do
but yeah, that would be the reason why I just decided to stop it off. All right, so that is the end of this like Q&A about marriage and family. So next I want to do a video on influencing and you guys can ask me questions on here. If there's anything you want to know about the influencer world, about what I do, leave it down in the comments and I'll also ask it on Instagram. But thank you so much for watching and interacting. If you want more of these types of videos, let me know. Thank you again. I'll see you soon.